Yeah, so not a beautiful day in the, uh, well, not sunny. I guess it's somewhat overcast out. A beautiful Rio Grande Valley. And uh, it's been raining, so it smells pretty uh, incredible. And everything's starting to flower again. A lot of shit that wasn't flowering last time I was here about two weeks ago. For instance, you got this Cordia bassieri. The uh, Texas olive, though it's got no relation to olives whatsoever. It's in Baraginaceae. Cordia is a pretty big, big genus. Uh, got quite a few species in it. Here's the flowers you can see, they're just fucking going off. And the fruits do look like olives, that's why it's got that name. Velvety leaves. Nice indumentum on them. Got a yellow uh, yellow inner part of perianth right there. You see some butterflies and shit just dancing around. Yeah, it makes you feel pretty good, you know, when the rest of the world makes you kind of want to throw up. Uh, which is a problem I tend to have a lot of the time. You know, humanity being what it is. Anyway, here we got the melon podium. Asteraceae, of course. A cute little fucking daisy. How about that? Do you like that? Do you like daisies? I do. <clears throat> well, I guess it depends. But I'd like them. Um, look at the fileries on these. Quite distinctive. Look at those goddamn fileries. Like little plates. Little roofing shingles. Pentagonal. You got a series of five of them. Actually, I think you got you got quite a you got you got a couple more. Uh, you know, underneath that first layer of green. Fucking buffalo grass is a pain in the ass. And then you got Palafoxia, Rosia. Lovely goddamn genus. You get you get a lot of these in the Mojave Desert in California. You get Palafoxias down there. Uh, one's an annual and one's a perennial. And you get them out where all those uh, uh, fucking guys are driving their go-karts around in circles with the flags and the, the raver lights on them and stuff. Down by Algodones Dunes. It's a... Uh, what a sight to behold. Here's a Karwinskia, quite a poisonous member of the uh, Ramnaceae. See the flowers, distinctive flowers over there. You get those petals interspersed with the uh, stamens. You know, the, the stamens, of course, occurring in between the petals, which uh, many Ramnaceae flowers do that. And then, of course, the fruit. You know, this is the, the uh, California coffee family. Of course, no relation to coffee. Another problem with the common names. And a buckthorn family, etc. Quite a few members in the deserts. You get Colubrina, Zizyphus, etc. But uh, Karwinski, of course, is uh, quite toxic. And, of course, those prominent veins, too. I mean, it just looked like a buckthorn. They almost look like a frangula. What the shit were you just rolling in? I seen you rolling in something nasty. I know it was something gross. Here you got Titostromia, Amaranthaceae. Amaranths, of course, are uh, no Amaranthaceae. You know, King Y and shit is in that family. You know, so you could tell all the hippies about it. You know, I bet ask a hippie if they know what family King Y is. I bet they'll say no. You know, but when it comes to talking about healing properties or something, if you put it on your balls, they could just write you a fucking novel. Look at those flowers, though. You need, see, this is a, one of those fucking plants. This is why you got to get a hand lens. You need one of those plants. This is, this is one of those plants you need a hand lens to get up in, give it a thorough rectal exam. You know, otherwise it's just, it just looks like some green leafy bullshit on the ground. You get up there with a hand lens, you can see all the different glands, the trichomes. And there's quite a few trichomes on these leaves. You know, Amaranthaceae, uh, of course, has a lot of extremely drought-tolerant and salt-tolerant members in it. This guy. Hustesia pilocella. Acanthaceae. It's in a Acanthus family. Hustesia's got quite a few members. This kind of threw me off at first. I didn't realize it was a Hustesia until I got up close because it's so fucking dainty. Normally, Hustesias are a lot bigger, and they're shrubby. But this seems, I don't know if this is an annual or what. It looks like it might be an annual, or at least the above ground. No, it's kind of woody. It's, it's a perennial, but it's everywhere here. Holy shit, I was pissing out my ass yesterday. I got the, I got some fucking, some stomach bug or something, you know, I was thrown up, and it kind of made me feel like I do when I look at this uh, buffalo grass, which is a highly invasive species. You know, it's uh, it's just, it's fucking taken over. It was introduced for cattle ranching, and it just ran loose, and now it's fucking, it, it, I've seen it all over Sonora, 
it's real bad in Arizona. Out competes natives, and uh, <clears throat> it's just it's a fucking nightmare. You know, I get I hate these jerk offs to try to say that invasive invasive species don't matter. No motherfucker, they do matter. They just they they conflict with the uh, perspective on the world that you wish was real but isn't. And that's that humans can drastically affect ecosystems by uh, bringing plants across oceans. And uh, mostly, I mean, across oceans are where continent to continent are where you really get the bad invasives. You know, just basically the premise is, you know, they, species evolve in ecosystems over millions of years. And so, you know, it's all checks and balances. And when you cross an ocean, you know, you, you cross that geographic boundary between ecosystems. You introduce one plant to another. And you, it shit, they just run loose. There's there's the insect or the fungus that kept them in check in their own ecosystem doesn't exist there. And so they just run wild and they can cause extinctions and just all kinds of fuck. Not not to mention a, this, the fucking human cost too. You know, a lot of money goes into getting rid of invasive species because they fuck with ag agriculture and human infrastructure and shit. So, you know, you got the zebra mussels in the goddamn Great Lakes clogging up the sewers and shit. The fucking anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, here's another species of verbenaceae. You gotta you gotta focus on the verbena family because it's real successful uh, in the more uh, humid deserts, the deserts Chihuahua and Sonoran, where you get a little bit more rainfall. You don't get too many ver verbenaceae. You get a few in California, but uh, you know most of the diversity in verbenaceae is out here. You get a shit tons of lantanas. This guy, and then this this is Olypia. Notice how the flowers. I mean, same thing. You got almost they almost look like a salvia family. They're in the same order as Salvia, Lamiales, but a different family, Verbenaceae. So it almost almost looks like a Verticillaster, but when you get up close, you realize it's not. They're, but it's it's same thing, just a cluster of a cluster of uh, zygomorphic flowers, bilaterally symmetrical flowers, and then opposite leaves in most cases, and they smell pretty nice too. You know, there's a lot of plants in here that uh, have been used by locals for cooking and shit. Oh yeah, it smells pretty good. You know, it does. It smells like oregano, kind of like a pungent oregano. And oregano, of course, is in the uh, Lamiaceae, which is in the same order as this. Remember, it goes order, family, genus, species. Don't be a prick. Memorize your taxonomy. All right? You got all well, these guys memorize what a plant does for you if you put it in your ass. But when it comes to evolutionary lineages or ecology, they couldn't tell you a goddamn thing. Look at a little butterfly. All right, that's nice. That makes me feel pretty good. Lantana. Yeah, and lant lantanas smell too. Let's go see what the fuck else. Look at this dainty little fuck. How what family you think this is? A twining vine. It's not this. It's not this in the background. It's a Celtis. It's a Celtis. Cannabaceae. What do you think this is? Curb Cucurbitaceae, the cucumber family. The squash family. It's basically a little tiny desert squash. Ibervillia. Isn't it nice? Did you ever know what the fuck Ibervillia was before you heard my loud ass mention it? Huh? Now you do. Isn't it cute? Isn't it cute? How many fucking meatheads out there are just dying to say something's cute, huh? You know, they just, they can't admit it. They don't want to seem like a fig. But, uh, you know, they want, they, they do want to, you know, get in touch with it a little bit. You know, I feel so sorry for them. It's so hard being a man sometimes. Because you got to be so, so astoundingly full of shit, you know, even to yourself. You can't even, uh, you know, look at a little squash like that and say, hey, it's fucking cute, you know? But then you put it in the context of uh, making you feel better about all the hideous shit out there. And uh, it's a little bit easier, a little bit more digestible to, uh, you know, be in awe at the beauty of uh, the natural world, as you call it. The natural, I just, the fucking real world. It's not, the natural world is, sounds kind of corny. I just, the fucking real world, you know? Because the human world ain't really real. It's all just made up bullshit. All right, that's all I got for now. Go fuck yourself. Here's the fucking Leucophyllum, Scrofulariaceae. You get quite a few species in Leucophyllum. You know, which are notable for having these silvery leaves. You know, these extremely canescent leaves. But in Texas, I think mostly what you get is just leucophyllum protestants. But I, in Mexico, you get quite a few other ones there. You got a Parkinsonia, nice. And some fucking Cordia over there. Some Karwinskia again. And Hustici is on a gun. Oh, there's a Guyacum. Zygophilaceae. Almost looks like a Fabaceae, but they call it the Texas ironwood. And it's different. It's in a creosote family. When it flowers, you see the little five distinct purple petals on it. But get up there and look. See how it's pinnate leaved. Almost looks like a, like a Fabaceae. Some Celtis. Cannabaceae. I can't believe that Celtis is in a, the weed family. You know? 
It does. It looks a little light. You got all kinds of vichelias and shit. You got your cobra linea, too. This spiny bastard, real mean. Yeah, but I like it. Some people like the mean stuff. Oh, you got the gucknadia too. Where the fuck is that? I can't see. It's a, one of the. Uh, it's a weird member of the sunflower family, but it's not flowering right now. Oh shit! Plenty of rutaceae too. Look at this guy. Look at this. Hibiscus marcianus. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. So he's got a bunch of stamens all clustered together in a central column, and then those those five white dots. How many white dots he got in? It? That's the female part. That's the stigma. Remember in Malvaceae, at least in the hibiscus, all the stamens and the uh, the stigmas are fused together in a central column. You called an androgynophore. I think they said. I don't know. I forget the exact name for it. But uh, you got. You know, I'm sweating my ass off. I'm about to fucking die. It's pissing out my ass today. Give me, give me some slack. All right, don't be a jerk. But this fucking. Uh, you can see it's got dozens of stamens, and then those five, uh, those five white stigmas on a beautiful red five-petaled flower with those those cordate leaves. God damn it, that's a beautiful plant right there. You know, and it's kind of a shitty specimen. It's not that big. Then over here you got another somewhat rare one, follow damnus with a pH, follow damnus spinescence. And this used to be in a pokeweed family, Phytolacaceae. The common name is the Texas Snake Eyes. You know, it kind of sounds like some fucked up sexual act you do to someone. The I don't know, I don't know where it came from. I guess because the eyes kind of look. I don't know. They don't really look like snake eyes to me. They look like little gross uh, gelatinous blobs. You know, like maybe you get at one of those uh, boba tea, uh, you know, things in Chinatown. Those boba tea shops in th Chinatown where it's, they're, they're super sweet and they kind of make you want to throw up, but they're still caffeine in it, so you buy it anyway. Looks like that. And, you know, again, the leaves on a lot of the plants out here are not that uh, distinct. You know, you get a lot of sessile leaves like that. Not even a petiole, spatulate. I guess you'd call it an oblanceolate, the leaves. But the leaves are nothing to look at. They're nothing showy. Just like a lot of plants out here. But then, of course, when they flower and they set seed, they're fucking, uh, you know, they're pretty impressive. You know, and of course, just adapted to the extremely hot 100 de degree temperatures, of which I'm currently sweating my ass off in right there. Okay, right here you got the Polanzia dodecandra in the Cleomacea. Almost looks like a brassica. It's in the order Brassicales, but uh, different family. You know, same family as the bladder pad, which you get in California. Get up there, look at those. Look at those goddamn, the stamens are just poking out. They're exerted like hell. You know, full frontal. Doesn't give a shit, you know, just, it's like he let, coming back from the shower and route to the locker room and he let the towel fall off and just said, fuck it, I'll keep walking. You know, y'all can get a look at that, huh? You sick fucks, if you want to. You know, it's not bad, not to be ashamed of, that's fine. Here's the fruits. Is it a salik or a capsule? Almost looks like a salik. Of course, saliks being the fruits that you get on the brassicas. You know, I, yeah, I've never looked into Cleo, uh, Cleomaceae too much, so I wouldn't really know. There's that palafoxia again. And here's the crotons, Euphorbiaceae. So many goddamn crotons, I'm not even gonna mess with that one. There's the heart, Parthenium, Hysterophorus. And uh, supposedly, five years ago, logged right here, was uh, a observation of the extremely rare Asclepius prostrata. But the, you know, it's such a rare goddamn milkweed, I don't have much hope of finding it today, but we'll see, you know, at least, uh, if I can, uh, you know, spot it before I get thrown off, because I am illegally trespassing right now, which, uh, you know, normally I, I don't do in Texas, because people are absolutely batshit about that here, but uh, this plant is rare enough that it warrants it. And here you go, here's, here's another uh, genus of Aster I was quite unfamiliar with until recently, Floristina. This is Floristina tripteris. You get a nice money shot of the flowers over there. Look at those Corollas. Look at those Corolla lobes. Look at how, how large those are. And you got those darker uh, anther columns. I can't tell. It, it's a perennial, but it dies back in the times of drought. And they got in a bunch of rain here lately, and everything's just lit up. You know, it smells. It's a very floral scented time here in the Rio Grande Valley. It smells uh, pretty. It smells pretty delightful. Look at this. This is pretty nice. Wasn't expecting to see this out here. This is a species of Aristolochia, probably Aristolochia erecta. The Dutchman's pipe. Pretty big, uh, 
pretty big genus. Normally they're vines. This is not obviously not a vine. Uh, and, and they're also uh, hosts to uh, swallowtail butterflies. They're in the Aristolochiaceae. That's another one of those basal angiosperm families. You know, so it's a, a modern member of a very ancient, not ancient, but primitive lineage, at least in terms of flowering plants. Look at how goddamn glandular that is, too. See how the glands, little glands of trichomes, and you got some nice fucking coloration, too. It's just cov covered in sand. And there, of course, is a, is that an unopened bud? I think it's an unopened bud, not a fruit yet. You know, it's, that's a wonderful genus of, uh, plants right there you know some of them get fucking huge you know they could be 20 foot long vines with flowers the size of basketballs you know somewhat obscene flowers too depending on what species you're looking at but uh yeah how about that holy shit this wasn't going off two weeks ago definitely responding to the rains look how narrow those leaves are too very linear leaves you know flowering right next to a parthenium on its wonderful sandy soil which Asclepius prostrata also loves too but i just you know i don't i can't tell if the plant's been wiped out yet He's, he's another, is that a Ristolokia too? I think so. It's just one that didn't flower yet. Snails, the snail, I wonder what species of snail it is. The native snail everywhere. Got a spurge, Euphorbiaceae. Yeah, how about that, what the shit? Oh, look at a soul in them. Yeah, look at that, see those, see those super, uh, super prominent anthers. Those yellow anthers. Five prominent yellow anthers with that little stigma in the middle. Of course, all united, petals all united into one, almost a disc. Looks like, what's the calyx look like, like on this bastard? Oh, you see there's, you, okay, that's nice. Five little sepals. Holy shit, I'm sweating, this just, sweat's just pouring off me. Looks like they cleared this land a while ago. You got the fucking buffalo grass coming in. It's a drag. Palafoxia, Parthenium, Lantana. What the shit else you got? You got some Hotropha coming back. That uh, Cleomaceae. Holy fuck, I'm about to pass out. Melon podium everywhere and what the shit. Got Benoa Sclepius. This fucking plant is so hard to... It's going to be probably extinct soon. You know, but this is the habitat. It likes this sandy shit. You know, and it got a nice Physalis. The ground cherries. Who doesn't like a ground cherry? Some people don't like ground cherries. What assholes. I think they taste fucking delicious. You got to get the Peruvian ones going in your garden. Those are the best. Oh, my God. I'm going to keel over. You know? Oh, my. What's this? Oh, look at that. Oh, this is an odd one. Looks like some sort of weird growth on it, though. Ah, look, it's a tequila. Baraginaceae. You got that melampodium again. Got the acleisanthes. Longiflora all closed up for tonight. These guys are waiting to go off. These guys just finished. Got some Hotropha. Slap you around with that. Get you set up nice. Don't be a prick. There's some Crotons. Again, the Crotons. But no fucking... I'm losing my mind. I gotta go, re, I gotta go back to the car. Replenish my fluids here soon. Before I pass out. Look at that Euploca again. Baraginaceae. You know, I think this is... Yeah, so this is... This has, you know, been disturbed, of course. It looks like they just plowed all the shit under. You got the buffalo grass coming in, fucking everything up. But, you know, there's still a lot, in, a lot of the good native flora. And, of course, it got dumped on. And so it just, you know, everything growing here in this sandy little patch of soil just absorbed it, absorbed it pretty well. It's doing great. You know, but no fucking Asclepius. I'm losing my I've been trying to see this plant forever. Like I said, it's probably going to be out soon. We'll see. Ah, oh, yeah, you could see how beautiful that Leucophyllum frutescens is. You know, you're contrasting the canescent leaves, those silvery leaves, with the uh, the beautiful purple flowers and what the shit. Isn't that nice? Real lovely plant, huh? Look at this. This is all oyster shells, too. All this shit, this is all, all oyster and clam shells. Who knows if it's... Uh, recent or if it's fossil deposits or what but apparently i mean this was either dumped there by people or it was uh you know this is an old old uh old uh riverbed of the rio grande i mean but jesus christ they, they look kind of you know like <laughs> they look kind of like fossils they look like they've been uh permineralized a little bit 
This whole this whole goddamn substrate right here is all that. Oh look, you got some goody Aresia. Oh, it's hot as balls, but a real nice day to be in South Texas. These these are goddamn fossils. Look at that. Who knows how many millions of years old? But evidently, it was uh, you know from when the Rio Grande was was uh, on top of where I am standing right now. Anyway, here's a Varia texana or Texensis, however the fuck you say the species name. Tex something. Texana Texensis. You get what I'm saying? This is the plant that that commonly commonly grows sympatric with astrophytomus theories. It's a succulent member of the sunflower family. Two species in a genus. Very salt tolerant. But this whole area where I'm standing is uh, apparently just former floodplain at a Rio Grande. Or apparently it was actually, you know, riverbed at some point. Look, those are all fossils. That's all uh, fossil mussel shells. How do you say Guayacum? Zygophilaceae? Oh yeah, here's one of the rarest plants I've ever been around. Asclepius prostrata, certainly the most rare milkweed in North America. We spent all day looking for it, sweating our asses off. It's not quite flowering yet, just growing on the side of the road in uh, Zapata County, Texas. And there you go, there's the nice uh, close-up of that umble. There's the leaves, they got a kind of undulate margin with some nice purple coloration. Should be flowering in a couple days here. You know, and I came through here uh, probably three weeks ago, and, and it was just, you know, fucking bone dry. Not a not a hint. And then, uh, you know, they got dumped on. That was about three weeks ago, and now, of course, they're just going off. So this is supposed to be the largest population. There should be a few more up the road. Let's see if we can find them. What a fucking view. Look at it. Yeah, there you go. Oh, look, some nice cumulus clouds over there in the distance. Maybe it'll rain later. It certainly chilled out a little bit. Anyway, here's a couple more. These are a little bit more uh, immature, at least they're, you know, pre-flowering stage than the other uh, prostrate milkweed. So you got to wonder, why the fuck did this thing evolve uh, to grow uh, flat on the ground, you know, to grow prostrate? You know, not prostate, prostrate. Why? What benefit does that confer to the plant? Because it can, you know, and it's obviously it's causing problems for the plant because half the reason this is so rare, and it's probably going to be extinct soon, I'm, I'm guessing. Who knows how many populations exist on private land there's no way to monitor you know because uh basically you know most of the habitat most of the region where this plant grows uh at least the united states uh is uh is all private you know so you can't really survey on private land unless the landowners are cool and you know most of them probably don't give a shit anyway so this is buffalo grass you can see how this can just completely out compete uh, something that that doesn't get taller than a couple inches, you know? And Asclepius prostrata certainly does not. So it's a, you know, it's a fucking, it's a travesty, uh, but such is the case uh, in the Anthropocene. You know, make way for the most important species or the species that thinks it's the most important species in the world. So it's the major loss of biodiversity and uh, evolutionary uh, wonders. But, uh, so you could see they just, they come up from a perennial rhizome down there. This guy's just bursting out. You know, and it, they smell. This, I mean, this plant is not, it's not a, it doesn't smell pleasant. You could smell the, uh, it smells kind of like, uh, you know, some uh, some of the Nicotiana species. You could just smell those, uh, probably the cardiac glycosides as well as a number of uh, other uh compounds that it uh, has in its tissue to uh, you know discourage things from eating it but uh, so you got tree plants here and it's a very distinctive color too it's like a purplish green you know one of the plants you confuse with this that also has the opposite leaves is the acleisanthes you know i got a couple acleisanthes here no border patrol you know the, the border patrol is normally lurking around like uh, kidnappers you know Doing it like kid, you know, like the the kid, the pedophile that drives the ice cream truck. It's been, it's kind of been a border patrol lately, but uh, <laughs> but they, you know, they're, they're kind. They don't say anything about the strange man covered in tattoos, kneeling on the ground, staring, uh, staring at the 
staring at rocks and plants and shit. You know, you, you walk by, you see a grown man in the middle of nowhere staring at the ground. You probably just figure he's on uh, speed or something. I don't know. You know, uh, wh what other people think of my ass doesn't really concern me, though. I don't, couldn't really give a shit either way. So anyway, there you go. Asclepius prostrata. Rarest milkweed in North America. We'll see if we can find it. Here's another Asclepius. This one is a, is a little bit more common. Asclepius on not the roides. You know, and you could just, I mean, just look at those goddamn hoods. You see how big they are. You got the pedals reflexed, bent back like that, and then you got those those hoods are massive. You know, they, they tower above. The hoods are twice as long as the gynostegium. You know, the whole uh, corona. The whole corona is twice as big as the gynostegium. We've seen quite a few of these, you know. There was, only, there was none of them going off a couple weeks ago. Everything's responding to the rain pretty nicely. Oh, yeah, get up in there and look at that guy. Oh, yeah. Anyway, like pedos in an ice cream truck. The Border Patrol. Oh, here's one now. Maybe I should get on the other side of the fence. Yeah, so there you go. Pen Penicetum ciliary. The buffalo grass. You know, and this is the main reason. This is the reason a lot of plants and a lot of uh, cacti, too, are just, you know, losing ground. They're just becoming more rare. Because this, this, being that it's not from this ecosystem, it just took off. It's got nothing to check it. Probably no insects that really eat it. Then it just... Uh, out competes everything else here and takes off. That's how invasive species work, you know. You you cross uh, oceans with uh, plants or any other organism, fungi, animals, etc., and they just bring them to new ecosystems that they're not a part of and haven't been in their evolutionary history, and they just run loose. And then you get the plants like uh, this Asclepius prostrata, uh, just getting overwhelmed and outcompeted and losing ground. I can't believe I'm fucking early for this again. This is unbelievable. It's, it's, it's hilarious. It is kind of hilarious. You know, in a dark and tragic way, it's fucking hilarious. Look at those umbles. They'll be going off. They'll be looking good. What do the hoods look like on a sleepiest prostrata? Look at that. That's it. So this is, this is, we got three plants here. One, two, three. And uh, that's, you know, you got one more a little bit up the road. And then uh, I think there was three more down there. But, you know, you just got to talk. It sounds like that cow is taking a hard shit or something. I don't know what he's doing. Maybe it's psychological distress, you know. So many of us these days. It's so many of us these days. Anyway, so only six or seven of these plants. It's the fucking rarest milkweed in North America. You know, it's just, and mainly just because it's losing habitat. It just, it can't, uh, you know, the buffalo grass... And then, of course, just, you know, probably cattle grazing to some extent, too. Though I can't imagine they, they, eat, they eat these, uh, they probably just trample them, you know. But it's a fucking beautiful plant. Even just the, the colors on those leaves. You know, the, the red undulate margins. You know, these will be going off in three or four days. Fucking only thing I'm ever early for, apparently, is that a phenology of uh, plants I want to see. But, uh. Anyway, who knows? Yeah, probably extinct. This will probably be extinct this century. You know, namely because of the buffalo grass and then, uh, to a lesser extent, land clearance and trampling. You know, just the typical uh, age-old story of habitat destruction. And again, this wasn't even here three weeks ago. You know, I lurked this area hard. You know, again, like a pedo in an ice cream truck. Ain't that? There wasn't, uh, none of these were out. You can see they just emanate from the little perennial taproot down there. But, uh, anyway... It's a sad story. But there you go, Asclepius prostrata. Growing in a beautiful Rio Grande Valley of South Texas. Huh? You can stop at Taco Palenque when you're here, huh? When you're at it. You know, and most of the most of the ranchers and shit we met around here have been pretty friendly. I think they're just confused. I don't think they get many people looking at plants here, but I think that's just in general. Not many people give a shit about this, so. Hopefully I can change it with these obnoxious videos. All right, that's all I got. Go fuck yourself and have a lovely evening. Bye.